Getting the best performance out of any four-wheel drive circuit car relies on getting the optimal torque split between the front and rear of the car. Now with a lot of late model cars this torque split can electronically be controlled such as the R34 GTR of Matt Longhurst behind me. So we've got Mark McCoy from MoTeC to talk a little bit about the technology involved. So for a start Mark, can we just talk about the mechanical system here with the transmission in the GTR? So we've got the, the gearbox with a transmission fair case behind it. How is the torque to the front of the car actually controlled? Right, so basically you've got a like a clutch pack that's hydraulically controlled. So generally there's a, a little valve in there that you uh, pulse really fast and the, the longer you pulse it for the more pressure you get on the clutch pack so more drive to the front of the car. So these cars obviously have the Atessa system as factory from Nissan. Uh, most guys are sort of ripping them out because okay, there's a lot of little bits and pieces you can do with them. But what we do is we actually uh, use the MoTeC dash to control that. So we create our own table of duty cycle or pressure more or less uh, to get the lockup that we want uh, front to rear. So most of the guys, uh, I usually get people to start simple, like start with throttle position and speed is generally what you want to do. What we did with this one, the guys wanted to go a little bit further. So they were sort of telling me, okay, we want more pressure in this corner, but not that pressure for another corner. So we sort of had to get a little bit funky. And what we've actually got this car doing is at the start finish line, the dash starts counting up lap distance. So we've got a table of lap distance for each corner. So we basically say in this corner add a little bit of pressure, in this corner take a little bit out. So it's now mapped for each corner around the track. Alright, let, let, let's just stop because there's a lot of information to um, unpack in there. So let's just head back and I think for a start what we want to sort of mention for those who aren't familiar with the, the GTR transmission is in this model of car essentially when you've got zero pressure on that clutch pack yep. it basically becomes a rear wheel drive yep. car. So what you're talking about there is as you're adding pressure into that clutch pack it's adding more and more torque transferred to the front. So Correct, yeah. so that's that's helpful to in some yeah. situations but not in others. Yeah, so it's a le less slip. Like one of the classic things they want to do is once they get up to a high speed down the main straight they actually want to unlock the center diff so then you're not wasting all your power driving the front because you're already going fast you're not accelerating hard so you don't need as much grip to move the car forward like you do out of a corner so they'll unlock it down the straight as soon as you get on the brakes into one of these corners you've got to lock it back up again but tight corner long flowing corner you know you might want something different so this is where we brought into the whole thing about lap distance as well Alright, so in terms of actually optimising the amount of front drive, yep. how are you deciding or how are the team deciding when they've got that absolutely right? Is that on data or is it purely on the driver feedback? Uh, driver feedback is always a fairly big one, um, but you are also monitoring things like uh, the G-force through the corner obviously and how easy the driver is able to sort of get the car through the corner. Because obviously uh, understeer or, or oversteer is a big thing that the guys are uh, looking after on this car. So I haven't really been deciding too much of that because at the end of the day it's the drivability of the car. So they're simply telling me what do they want. They want, they want more drive through this corner and less through that corner. So that's all I've really been doing. So. Now in terms of using the, pit, uh, the lap distance that's a pretty smart way mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. controlling uh, the lock up essentially for each corner. I've heard of other other people using uh, GPS or geo fencing using uh, GPS location. Yep. Uh, what's your thoughts on the, the pros and cons of lap distance versus a geo fence for doing this sort of sort of task? The one the one slight downside of, of GPS, now the GPS has really sort of changed the way we do a lot of things like lap timing and that. But for a for a cheap solution um, I would question whether it's the most accurate thing every now and then because sometimes the satellites up in the sky just don't want to play ball and like every now and then they'll just sort of wander off a little bit and it might not be very far but that might put you over the other side of the fence down the main straight and that's where the whole geofencing thing might be a little bit little bit unpredictable whereas if your wheel speeds are working and your beacons working you guarantee as soon as you go across the stripe it resets the lap distance 
It's important to mention there as well that the accuracy of GPS is a lot to do with that is how many satellites the GPS antenna has access to and that's going to depend on where in the world you are. So in some places you have a lot of satellites so the accuracy is, is much better or the reliability I should say is much better but in other parts where you don't have as many satellites it can be problematic. The other thing we find as well with one of our local tracks is an area where uh, access to the satellites can be shaded a little bit by tree lines so there are a few problems to think about there. Now, Moving on with this, the system here, in terms of the, uh, the, the speed that the system can work, how quickly are we talking here? How quickly can you make adjustments? Uh, do you need to preempt this, in other words? Uh, well, basically, it's all programmed in as a, as a map, so it's set in the dash. Um, the guys are using the data. Um, as far as how quickly it updates, like it, it's obviously being calculated in the Motec dash at a, at a, you know, quite a very fast rate. So multiple, multiple times a second, it's updating how much pressure. Um, it will calculate it quicker than the diff can physically react, put it that way. I think that was maybe what I was more meaning in terms of if you wanted to go from zero lockup to full lockup, uh, how long mechanically does that sort of change take? Have you got numbers around that? <laughs> it's one of those good questions that you ask me and I have no idea. I haven't watched. Generally speaking, you would never switch something uh, on to off. I would generally always have it bleed out and bleed back in because you think about it like it's a clutch. What happens when you dump the clutch in a manual car? You don't really want to do that. You always sort of slide it out. So I don't know the actual numbers, but what you would have is a, almost like a, a nice smooth curve. So as you tip into the corner, the duty cycle raises, so therefore the pressure raises as, as the G-force raises. So it's not an instantaneous thing. You sort of so never you might be talking about moving between, say, 50 and 70% lockup rather than zero to 100 in, in an instant. Correct. I mean, realistically, the hydraulic system's pretty fast, so it's gonna happen, like, if you want to happen in half a second, you're probably gonna get zero to full lockup in half a second or something like that, but you'd probably never do that, practically speaking. Uh, Look, it's uh, just common as we see the electronics on the cars and the systems in the cars advance. We, we see the cars go faster and uh, people taking advantage of all of those systems. So uh, great to see how that's being applied here on Matt Longhurst's car. Thanks for, thanks for the chat, Mark. No problem. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.